morning i hope you're all having a good weekend um you may or may not have noticed that i didn't film a video yesterday for several reasons uh partially i kind of forgot um i was also kind of really like focused on doing what i was doing because it i need mean, to really concentrate it's a um it's a design that and a technique that i've not really done much of um so without further ado i'll show you now i did kind of show you this in part part built mode before i'd shake the handle and everything but this is fully finished now it's a um a seven inch blade which is the, probably the largest blade they've done to date it's a full what they call a scandivex which is a cross between a scan flat scandi grind and a convex um the cross guard and the pommel are both of six mil owen tool steel that's been gun blued and the handle is segment segments segmented macarta with uh black macarta spacers from from uh, jay at custom composites um, the blade is five mil thick, O1 tall steel, and we've got an unsharpened but ground false edge along the back. But it's a real homage to the um, sort of knives that I loved growing up in the 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 eighties and early nineties from the the first Blood movies and the Predator movie, um, and. Uh, all those type of action films where the, the you know the, the lead guy had an awesome knife which was probably made by Randy Lyle or someone like that uh, Jim Lyle sorry so the traditional K bar which is kind of what I base the handle on not so much the blade because the K bars are about an inch and a quarter shorter than these I think um, the traditional K bar would have been stacked leather with a, a cross guard and a pommel. Um, now, I think uh, a couple of knives of that era that were similar to the K bar had like a bolt so that the end of the tang would have been uh, threaded and then the bolt locking everything together. But after a little bit of research, I asked a few questions um, and the K bars were actually peened. So that's what I've done. And if the camera can pick that up. But I've actually peened that. I'll stick some photographs up of the uh, of the, the stages of the peening process. But the only peening I've done has been with brass pommels before. Um, and obviously you get quite a good finish. But because this is steel on steel, and I've I've, I've actually managed to it's almost it's almost vanished. You'll see from the photographs anyway. Uh, the 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 end of the tang you can't now it's all all um, flattened and, and and darkened up you can't actually see really there's a slight change of shade but you can't really see the you can't really see the end of the tang so much so it's a full length tang ten mil thick tang so you know it's very much a, 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 my take on a tactical Bowie knife. Um, I haven't got a name for it yet. I'm not sure if I'll ever do another one because there's probably about 20 hours of work there in that knife. Um, but I think we're gonna. I'm gonna send it down to Toby for him to do. Uh, he just started doing like a, a tactical style leather sheath. It's kind of cool. I mean, I could do it myself, um, but I, to be honest, Toby's a better leather worker than I ever was. So. Um, and if he's doing leather work, I can make another knife. So it's going to go down to Toby now. Um, we've been talking through some ideas about how to sort of making it look that sort of nineties uh, high end tactical build sort of sheath. Obviously, back then they weren't using Kydex, so it will be like a tactical leather sheath. Um, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Uh, never really built anything this sort of uh, 
spec before, uh, Bowie style spec before. Um, I wasn't really sure where I was going to go with it when when I first started the knife. Uh, there's a couple of things that I could have probably done a little bit better on it. But overall, um, I'm really pleased with it. And it's, it, it is a good, I can feel already, it's going to be a good strong. It's going to be a good strong knife. Um, the grind turned out really nice. It's a good sharp. Scandivex is one of those ones where you've just kind of got to learn out of three. There's no, there's no way of jigging them. You've just got to kind of learn to free on them. There's a little bit of a wave in the bevel at this side. If I'd have uh, rubbed the uh, scales back to polish, you and, and and took that shoulder away, you wouldn't have seen that. But I wanted, I wanted to keep the, the oil quench for that blackened look. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Like I said, I don't think uh, I don't think I've thought of a name yet. I think in like the the field and steel grunt or something like that, or the um, something tactical sounding. I don't know. You guys, you guys, pop a comment in the in the comments section. See what you think we should call it. Um, uh, whether I sell this one, I don't know. Uh, whether I make another one, I'm not sure, because um, there's a lot of lot of hours in this. The tool steel cross guard probably what took the longest. I think the tool steel cross guard probably took the same amount of time as a blade. Uh, but I just wanted to see if I could do it. I wanted to test myself, see if I could do it. Anyway, guys, really pleased with that. So uh, normal service will be resumed. I need to get back to making orders, need to get back to making jackrabbits, need to get back to making Garcias, need to get back to making isolations uh, and get orders out and I'm, I'm going to try and build up a little bit of stock so hopefully I can offer sort of knives that aren't on the waiting list. I understand that not everyone not everyone wants to get on a waiting list. People, Some people would just rather buy whatever's ready and I totally understand that that's absolutely fine so what I'm going to try and do as well as fulfilling orders if you are on the waiting list thank you uh, but what I will try and do is um, build up kind of a stock of, of the popular colours so OD green hunter's orange stuff like that on the jackrabbits anyway um, we're still looking into uh getting the the jackrabbit blanks uh water jetted out that's probably gonna be next month probably now uh sorry so we're nearly in june now probably july before that happens now um just back and forth with the the, the engineering firm that are doing it and uh, and so a couple of little niggles that they've had setting the machine up. So what I'm going to uh, do is, is pop up there when I'm allowed. So probably in a couple of weeks and just we'll go through. It's just easier than back and forth correspondence. So I'm going to uh, leave you now with a couple of little um, um, short videos of the the, the new, the new uh, tactical Bowie. And uh, look after yourselves and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm.